Hello everybody, here we are again back in my workshop, my name's Colin Way. We've got the expert uh, cameraman behind the camera today, Charlie Way. Um, he's home at the moment. So, um, where were we? We were doing nutcrackers, we were doing these fellas here. So Christmas time is a coming um, and we're starting um, our first um, big decoration, like I say, second part of the Nutcrackers. We've done a few Christmas tree decorations, all those sorts of things, um, and this is where we are. So if you remember, if you didn't see, um, uh, where are we doing? If you didn't see last Thursday's uh, live video, we got to the point of an armless soldier. There we are. So we've done that one. We've done the hat, I think. Yes, we've done the hat. Got the hat here, so we got that far. So we've got a few things to do today. We've got to do a peek for him. We've got to do some arms, and I want to show you how to, once we've done the arms, how to bend them. So you can see the drummer boys here, they've got bent arms, so they've got an elbow. Um, so we're just gonna do that. I've got a few things prepped for you. I've got some paints out. Um, we're not gonna do a huge amount of painting today, only because none of these are sanded, but I do want to show you how we paint them and the differences between, uh, between painting. Um, and also decoration. So I've got loads of aerosols, loads of airbrushes over there. I've got all their hair, um, all the cordage, all those sorts of things. So I can show you um, what I'm using and how you can finish your own. I've already seen loads and loads of pictures of people that have started these. Even some people that have carried on regardless of plans and all those sorts of things and started doing the arms head um, and are already on to painting. So well done everybody out there. Um, this is, like I say, the first big one. Um, big decoration. We are going to do more. There's two or three others that we're going to um, sort of get stuck into before we um, get to the big day. Um, I think we might have a little bit more time now if you're in the UK or if you're in England in the UK anyway. Um, but of course, you're all over the world. So um, so uh, let's have a look. Let's crack on. Just quickly. Yes. Uh, what grit is your CBN wheel? CBN wheel is 100, 180. 180 grit, that one. We're going to use today as a bit of um, a Q&A session as well. So get those questions coming. Like I say, Charlie is on hand to ask me. Um, we've only got a few things to actually turn. Um, so there should be loads of time to do things. Okay. So let's get stuck in. Like I say, we've done that bit. I want to make a peek. I want to do the arms first. A little bit of turning to get us limbered up and into things. Um, so we're going to go straight in with a skew chisel. So bang on, right on there. Um, and I'll get my glasses on, or I've got my glasses, and we'll start with the skew straight away. So we're going to make a hand, or an arm rather. Let me just get one of the ones that I've made already. Um, so this is one that I done last Thursday for a, a group of turners. Um, there we are, that's the sort of shape we're doing. So you can see I've turned this sort of shape here, and then we've just sanded it flat. We'll do that for you in a minute. We'd also do a little bit of drilling as well for you, just to, just to show you. And of course, we're going to put a bend in one of the arms. So I'll do this. I'll do two um, and uh, just copy the first one. You don't have to be over precise on the arms, not like you were on the, um, on the legs, because the arms, yes, they are beside each other, but they've got the body um, in the way. So um, as long as you're close... Um, so yeah, questions today. If you've got loads of questions, I will do my very best to answer as many as I can. Um, this is Tulip, the timber that we're using, and I'm going to be turning this at around about 2,000 revs, and we're going to use the signature skew. I know there seems to be a world shortage of um, the carbon Way signature skews at the moment. Um, Crown are, are busy making, and we're all trying to get restocked up, but... Um, I've been promised they will be coming, not sure when, but they will be. So we're just going to run the skew back and forward. This is a roughing cut. So nice and gentle back and forward. As you get used to the skew, then you can make bigger cuts. You can go a little bit bigger. There we are, so just a little bit more. Um, because this is the first of two arms. I think the video is a bit poor today. A little bit pinched off and out. We need to pedal a little bit faster. We've, we've spoke about this before. I have no rhyme or reason. I don't do anything different to make the, the um, playback change. Upload speeds vary. Your download speeds vary. 
So it can be anything. Won't be like this forever. I keep, I know I keep promising you that we are going to have massive improvements. The muddy road outside says that we are having a hard wiring soon. And also, there's some surprises coming for Axminster in terms of video, so I'm not going to spoil too much. But things will be changing. Multi cameras and stuff like that. Don't worry, I don't mean changing as if they're going to stop the videos. Um, they're changing in terms of them improving in picture quality and cameras. So, so someone's actually asked any news on the cameras? Yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for it all to turn up. So all, all the uh, all the money's been spent. We're now just waiting on delivery. Okay, so you see what we're doing here? Just the sort of shape that I'm doing them hand. I'm going to put a little bit of a relief in here with the skew. So using the heel corner to get right into the detail. Same on this back edge. That's all we're going to do. Remember, I'm not sanding anything today. We'll do another one of those whilst we've got them there and copy it. I mean, if you were wondering what I was talking about with waiting for cameras, um, I have got all my gear and I use all my gear for my private demonstrations. Um, but most of those are through Zoom. Well, you haven't been able to figure out how to make it work through um, Facebook yet. Thank you for those people that have given me suggestions. We are working on it. There we are, so we'll do another one of those. Okay, nice simple shape. You can make whatever shape you want, of course. But that's a nice simple one. These are all been pre-centered up, so if you think I'm just putting it between centers and hoping for the best, I'm not. I have um, taken some time to center these blanks up. Hope you found the plans, everybody. They're on the Facebook um, page. Lily will tell you exactly where they are, I'm sure. And the plans that we're putting up cover lots of other things as well. Remember the Christmas trees that we turned the other day, Christmas houses, little steam trains. I've seen some great pictures of people doing the steam trains. So we're just roughing down. I'm not going to bother the size in terms of diameter. It's close enough. Bits of timber that I started with were the same. Around about 25 mil. And just one more at the other end. And because of what I said about where they're positioned, I'm not overly fussed about getting over accurate. So I'm just going to position them, pencil line everything, and copy them to the pencil lines. Nice and easy. So we're swapping between the two tips. I'm rolling with the what we call the heel, the short tip, but all the V cuts, the detail I'm putting in with the toe, the long tip. Heel again. Uh, so someone is about to get the 350. WL lathe, what size of your signature chisels will be best for the smaller lathe? Well, I mean, if I'm honest, I'll, I use this one more often. This is the biggest one, okay? So that's the one I use the most. The one I like the most is the small 12 mil one because it's so well balanced. Um, and I could do what I've just done now, I could do that with a small one. Um, and most of, well, a lot of my small work will be done with that one. So I would probably, 
go medium to small. And any plans to demo a nutcracker that can actually crack nuts? No. <laughs> no, because that's not that, that involves a lot of routing. It's not a great demonstration, if I'm honest. It's a very loud demonstration. It takes a little bit of time. You'll be just sat there watching me sat at a stall um, with a router box in front of me. You can't actually see anything. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's not, it doesn't make for good viewing really. Follow the the, the, um, the plans, don't forget the cradle, you position your body in the cradle and you then route between those grooves. Remember what I used, we'll just pan back a bit Charlie just so I can show you this one. So oh, the plans are to make that router box okay and it includes the um, measurements inside um, so I make the cradles first and then just gently press those around the um, the cradle when I'm screwing them together. And then this is MDF, or this is actually um, a high density fiber wall. So this is like a, a shower wall material. Uh, it's really, really low friction. And um, that groove allows a 30 mil guide bush um, to create my 25 mil hole or slot running up through the figure. And use um, kitchen fit, Sorry, kitchen fitters um, straight 12 mil uh, rasp bits. Uh, uh, the re only reason I do that is because they're long. They're the longest bits I can get that are strong. And all on that length, you wouldn't get anything on a quarter inch or six mil shank or even eight mil shank. It has to be a, a half inch, 12 mil shank on there. Okay. Um, how big can you make the Christmas trees with the cows? Um, so a friend of mine in Spain taught me how to do those along with um, Stuart King. But a friend of mine in Spain used to make um, curls like that or, or showed me how to make curls like that um, as big flowers, sunflowers. And they ranged anything from sort of um, an inch right the way up to about five or six inches. So you can get those curls using the right timber at the right time of drying. And I would say wet um, hazel or wet birch, that sort of stuff is perfect. You can really push those fibers up to make some really, really big flowers. Charlie's got a smile on his face. What are you laughing at? Is, is it a lot better to have a well-balanced tool in your hand? Who, uh, who would, who's asked that? Is that Victoria Kerr? No, nah, it's Joel Caddy. Joel, hello Joel, my old mate. <laughs> old school friend of mine. A very old school friend of mine. Uh, right, let's pop that to one side. We're going to drill a couple of holes, so we need to put the arms in. So, thin, uh, Charlie, would you come on over to the drill? Let's have a look. It's better without the light, really. Is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry, let's get rid of it. <laughs> Well, not only all the way through, I just want to make a, a position for the dowel. There we are, so that's those two. That's all we need on that one. We're going to now, if you come on back, Charlie, we're just going to we'll cut one of those so that 45 so we can rejoin it together again and then whilst we've got the sander on there we'll do that peak that we need to do so we go back to our platform you've seen this platform so many times okay and just so I've got somewhere to rest um, we're going to use one of the shikuni sauce these are all back in stock now I think they've had a, a, a bit of a spell out of stock all right, how's it? Can we come up a little bit, Charlie, and just so I can. Yeah, and we're gonna. All right there. Yeah. So yeah, one of the little shakuni sauces. I use this this quite a lot. It's a nice bendy sauce, so for flush cutting that sort of thing. Alternatively, um, you could go for where's my other one? Da, 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 that one there. What's the name of this one? But this is it's slightly different than this one. This doesn't work as well with your, your uh, V-Bots because it has your spline on the back here. Um, but still, quite fine. That's the important thing. If I go for one of my other sort of 
woodworking saws as where you know so the tooth is, is far coarser and so you, you is this finer stuff you struggle with a little bit right so now you gotta think about where the hole is so we want to um have our arm bent so let me grab one that i've already cut i don't want him sort of bending out to the side so this is a gives you an idea of where i am so that's where we want him about there and then we'll just do it's about a 45 degree cut there <laughs> good thing with this is that you're not pushing against the saw you're actually pulling the cuts on the pull so it just makes life a little bit easier And then I'm not going to glue it now because obviously that's going to take time to, to dry. But then you just turn him around and they, you've got your, your bent arm. Sand the faces before you glue them together so you've got good clean faces. But we'll pop that one on the, on the figure. We'll get the sander up and running as well. <coughs> pop the saws back to one side. Let's get our sanding disc on there. You know what we're doing here, guys. We've seen this so many times. Um, Chuck with the sea jaws on. And then we'll expand those jaws onto that faceplate ring. It's been a few questions about this one. These are, so this one here, these are strips of 100 mil wide um, hook okay um, and make it to suit what the disc that you can find um, this particular one's a 200 mil um, disc 8 inch disc but you know you, there's loads of power tool ones out there power tool discs let me grab one so power tool discs and then just make a smaller sanding disc this is a bit nylon someone asked the other day whether we it can turn nylon and I grip that inside the jaws the sea jaws um, really, really useful you know, for that size of this, because just because they're readily available, really. Um, how long are the robust tool rests from top to bottom? Uh, da, 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 hundred and uh, sorry, ninety mil. I've got samples here, which are um, oh, I've got one sample here, which is thirty mil. But this is how they're coming supply, guys. So my uh, my sample one was one thirty. Okay. They are actually, the ones in stock are 90 mil, okay. Fits, fits these lathes, fits all of our lathes um, that have the, the inch tool rest post. Right, I'm just going to pop the extractor on, we'll do some um, sanding. Just quickly, have you got any ideas on how to realign my small wood turning lathe? They've tried to move the feet but they seem to be stuck. The headstock is fixed and they've taken off the tail stock and cleaned it up underneath. Any more ideas? Yeah, we'll have a look in a minute. Let me finish sanding and we'll, we'll have a look. I'll give you some ideas. Definitely don't touch the tail stock in terms of don't shim it, don't file it, don't do anything like that. You can clean it, but don't take any metal away. Um, are you painting at all today? We won't be painting. We're going to look at the paints, but we won't be painting. It's, uh, it's like watching paint dry. No, no. I can show you we're going to go all over it, though. Um, I'm going to do the peak while we're here, while I've got the table, and then we'll sand the, the arms. Uh, why wouldn't you make a recess in the back of the disc to hold it in the chuck? On the sander, the sanding. Um, disc, yes. I guess. Yeah. Um, just for convenience. It's easy just to, you know, um, use the faceplate ring. It's firm. It's it's um, uh, it's accurate. The MDF, if I use that as a recess, eventually would delaminate. Or you know, all those sorts of things. Really, it's just a little bit easier, more convenient for me. So I'm just going to quickly sand the peak. If you remember, it's been twenty minutes. If you remember the peak started off like that, so whilst you were gone I just used my template scribed around it 
and then just very, as you can see, very roughly cut with the saw. Now we can sand to our line. It's a right angle to the hole. Grabbing my the template to the peak because I want to be able to drill a hole in the peak. So we're just going to put a center point in there. Just quickly over here, Charlie. So it's just six mil drill bits. This particular bit in here is a lip and spur. There we are, so that's the peak done. Remember, most of this painting for this is gonna be done without the, the um, soldier together. You wanna have them separately, painted separately. I can go on there now. You come back a little bit, Charlie. Thank you. So another bit of no, another couple of bits of dowel. Get that one started. Now 
We've just got one more thing to do. I'm going to keep the sander there just for the moment. Um, just while I put these on. So that's going to go bent on on the left hand side. So this could be something like a bugler. Um, obviously if you're making a drum boy then you want to bend both arms. Um, so Chris has been trying to find some 100 millimeter SQ spindle blanks. Any ideas where he could get them? 100 mil spindle blanks. SQ spindle blank. A bit more info, Chris. I'm not quite following. There we are. Look, we have so far either a bugler, if you have him, a one-handed bugler, if you have the arm up a little bit, or you might have with a single. A single bent arm, just a, a sentry, a guard, okay, where you can have one arm straight. You can have both arms straight if you want to, just stood there. It's highly up to you. But we need to make a nose. Um, what benefits do you find from a floor standing pillar drill over a bench mount? Gives you more bench space. It's the honest answer. Um, uh, you can gain a little bit more out of the column as well, not like they've ever used that extra length in the column. It's just a little bit more, for me, convenient. Bench pace is precious, um, and yeah, I can sort of shove that out the way somewhere. Um, you know, most of the time, pillar drills that come on benches or bench drills are going to be a, bit, a little bit too high for you anyway. Um, that's just perfect height. Um, I love my pillar drill. It's used as much might as a wood turning workshop. Pillar drill, bandsaw, lathe, then very closely followed with a planar thicknesser. The planar thicknesser I use on uh, thicknessing a lot of material, so I only have to turn edges. Like um, if you think about um, bases, trophy bases, um, a lot of the Christmas decorations are, are thickness down to a certain. Uh, uh, um, thickness before I start shaping it, the peaks for instance, impellers on um, the, the carousels, all that sort of stuff. So those four machines are pretty much used non-stop, you know. Uh, so the, the one from Chris, it was 100mm square spin, spindle blanks. 100mm square, so you're for, yeah, it's, you'll be lucky to get them off the shelf, Chris, I'll be honest. The best thing you can do is buy plank in that size. Um, you can get a uh, four inch board. Um, if you get a good timber yard, you get a good four. You know, you can get four inch board. That's what I tend to do. Um, or if you're not looking for anything too exotic, then uh, your local hardwood supplier. We use one here in the southwest of England, close to us, called Devon Hardwoods, um, and they're really, really good. We get all our big tulip like that. Um, world timbers we use fairly often. Uh, it depends on your location in the world as to what you can get, what's around you, that sort of thing. Um, if you get a good old timber yard you can pretty much get anything air dried that's native to you in your country you know um, let's just make a, a, a nose whilst we've got that another question sander there yeah uh, any suggestions what to do with a lot of spare pen tubes I'm not on the top of my head no um, Christmas tree decorations you can make little ends with them you can make pens um, you can make, you know, spare um, uh, spare pen tubes for your, for your pens. We're always going to break a few um, tubes, sort of thing. Um, um, but yeah. Do you use beeswax or orange oil? I've used lemon oil a, a fair amount on salad bowls. Um, beeswax is always a, a part of, you know, using carnauba stick or what we call wood turner stick. Beeswax is always part of that, so there's a certain degree of beeswax in there. Um, but I don't use pure beeswax unless it's a con you know contained in, in something else, personally. And how long are the robust tool rests, including the top plus the post? Right, I'll measure it in front of you so you can see. So in including the top, so from bottom of the post to top of tool rest. Um, so we're looking from the very bottom of the post to the top. 145 mil, so we're just shy of five and three quarter inches. 145, five and three quarter inches. All right. <laughs> quick, quick nose. I've got a question from Victoria. Keep it clean. 
Keep it clean. Uh, do you think you'll, you'll ever be as good as Jason Breach one day? <laughs> never. Never. Jason is going to be doing some turning videos as well. So Jason is... Let me just turn that off for a second. You may have seen, or you probably would have seen Jason doing a lot of the, um, the hand plane videos. Um, a terrific cabinet maker. But what uh, you will see is him doing a lot of the turning videos as well. Once we're back what I call in the main hub um, and getting this new equipment working. Jason's going to be a lot of doing a lot of turning stuff, so a completely different eye on on uh, making boxes and things like that. Absolutely fantastic, really, really um, one to watch. So that will be happening soon, whether it's before Christmas or not, I'm not quite sure, we'll see. Um, but it's going to be soon, as well as Ben and as well as Craig, of course. Wait, wait, right. wait what's the brand of the light? This one, this yeah. is it was one of the Axminster the lights. Um, so this is the LED. This is what I was really quite excited to get because for a long time you guys have seen me using my uh, rechargeable one um, from Glow, Glow Force. But I wanted something that I didn't have to charge every time. It's getting to be a bit of a pain and I wanted something that was bright. So I've gone LED um, and we use these when we were teaching um, engineering courses. We use them on the engineering labs and I was so taken by them then because they're just, they're just easy. They're so bright and um, my eyesight's not getting any better so I need a decent light in the workshop so this is a, it's an adjustable so you can turn the light up and down um, it doesn't get hot which is really important for us wood turners of course um, so um, Lily can you just find this light and put this up on um, on screen please um, I, I forget the number of it but um, yeah probably this is one of the, be the best buys I've had this year I reckon that one really really good I'm just going to turn it down because I'm binding myself right it does it's on I'm just going to make a quick nose a little bit of lime that's all that is Pardon? Uh, yeah, coming a bit closer. So, yeah. well done. So here you go, dead easy. You're making a little hook nose basically. So all I'm going to do is just flatten it off a little bit. To make that hook shape. shouldn't really be cutting on my sanding platform. Let's get one of these bits of timber. And so we're going to just cut them off. Cut them off there. Do a bundle of these. Yeah, you know, I've always said you, I very rarely make one of anything. So I tend to make a, a few of these together. So what we're going to do now, find that fresh cut edge. Just sand a very slight radius. There we are. Let's just get that. Just tell me if where I am, Charlie, in terms of the head. All I want to show is how that fits. Just that radius. How's that, mate? All right. So that radius just to complement the shape of the or the curve that's on the the face there. And then again, poxy that one on. Um, give him a little sand up, then I give him a bit of a poxy. All right. There we are. Let's just show one that's finished, Charlie. Okay. Go back a little bit. Get the old drum all in there. So we get close this up on the face. You can see how that nose works. We're, we're exaggerating all of the features. Okay. There we are. So let's just have a look at the other parts. We've said, you know, once we get to this point, that's just the start of what we're doing so just the start of what we do once we've finished the the making the physical making of all the wooden bits that that, that come together then we've got to disassemble it and start painting so remember paint all the bits don't reassemble until it's all dry and all those sorts of things so if we look at one that's finished and let's go for the drummer boy he's a little bit more complex um, the bits that make up one of these nutcrackers, there's a few bits that you have to buy. You, you can either buy these from um, the internet or you go to hobby um, stores. 
um, if you've got anywhere that does this hobby um, uh, materials and then you'll find them so if we start with the fake fur it's, it's, it is literally that it's um, a material that crafters use and it comes in all colors this our friend here has got gray but you can get it in whatever size you want and you just cut strips off basically um, you get different qualities some good some bad um, the really bad stuff tends to be a little bit um, shinier than this this is a really good quality one um, but yeah, just, just brush it in the right direction, cut enough off enough to glue this on. I don't use epoxy, I go for the contact adhesive, um, which is a little bit uh, rubbery. You um, apply to both surfaces, um, wait for a few minutes and then, then it'll go on. Put the hair on before you put the hat on. Make sure you do that, otherwise you never hide the seam. And then a little bit for the, for the beard. If you're making a queen, then obviously the queen doesn't have a beard. Um, but the queen, instead of a beard, a beard here, to hide the mechanism, if you're making one with a mechanism, she has a little bit of ribbon, and that ribbon is concertinaed up, um, and that's placed in its, its place here. Okay, so really quite easy. Um, cordage, again, cordage of all sizes. Let, I'm going to grab my, grab my um, decorating box and bring that to you. Never enough room in your workshop. Well, never enough room in my workshop anyway. So cordage. Sorry, I'm going to get out of the way of the camera in two seconds. So I've got a mixture of paints to show you as well in a moment. Again, hobby shops, all different sizes. This will be used in the um, these pieces here, on the shoulders, um, sometimes on the, the, the hats here. Um, but again, all different sizes. You can get this e either in rolls or just by the metre length um, and use as, as you wish. Uh, in terms of ribbon, uh, sorry, not ribbon, chain, again, same thing, internet or hobby shops. And you can get all colours, shapes, sizes, um, a real mixture of, of different ribbons in there. Um, and the same when we were looking at, at uh, the, the buttons. So the buttons here and the, the buttons that are holding the, um, the, this chain up. These are upholstery pins. And upholstery pins you can get either in um, uh, either plain like these or decorated. And again, um, I don't know whether you can get, whether you can see that, but they can be quite, um, uh, quite figured, you know, some quite interesting shapes um, and colors. Um, what else have we got on there? I think that's a bit, that's all about the decorations. Um, but it's just I tend to just create a box of, of bits. Come on around just to the to the paints there, as well as you know, as well as things like that. If you're making queens and kings and stuff, a little bit of glitz, the nerd every now and again, you'll have fun. Okay, with it. Christmassy after all, there's no taste in Christmas, so you can go as crazy as you want to. Well, there's no taste in my Christmas anyway. Um, so. Paints. So we'll have a good look. It's a good cross section of paints. Um, I did mention the other day that we do use a lot of toy safe paints. Yeah, However, how long? Man? Forty minutes. Forty minutes. However, it, I don't. Not all of my paints are toy safe. They look like toys. They're not toys. They're not designed as toys. But just be aware. If you're going to give them to someone that's likely, you know, to be a, a scenario where kids are going to get. Their hands on them then think about it you know think about the paints you're going to use rust-oleum is a good one rust-oleum are toy safe paints um these are little teaser pots tester pots and that's water water um, based um the enamel ones now axminster we sell these the axminster tools sell these um, these are the acrylic the enamel um paints and that's mainly the detail so we're not going to block color anything with things like that nor the rust-oleums so the main block color gets done with this sort of thing, or the airbrush. And you'll have two different types of finish. If you use airbrush and stains, then you'll have a transparent finish. So it's a different look. So if I, I can I'll give you the comparison. So um, we'll put them both together for you. So the guard on my right is an airbrush paint. So we've got a translucent green. And then the block color on the drummer boy here is a solid color, it's an opaque color, and that's an aerosol on those. Right, so that's the difference. You can see some wood grain through the green one. It gets blocked out on the on the red. Um, there's a couple of interesting ones in the front there. The um, the green and the red 
in the plastic tubs. I get those and a selection of those. These are from Germany. And these are the home, really, of nutcrackers, smokers, all those Christmas things. So these come from a company called Steinert's. Uh, in Germany um, and in the Erzberg region. So this is from a, a town called Obenhau. And if you've ever been to Obenhau, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But it's like um, Siphon, which is only about five miles away from it. It's a perpetual Christmas town. Stunning. They've got all of these nutcrackers, German smokers, Christmas carousels, all on permanent display. It's like um, all illuminated for Christmas throughout the year. There isn't a, a month that it's not uh, Christmas decked up. Um, wonderful place to go and visit um, but those they're water based and I've never used a paint which is quite so the pigment in it is, is so dense one brush load and it, you, you won't see what's behind it at all it's fantastic stuff to use and real Christmassy colours um, they're really really good chestnut spirit stains of course we're using those all the time I've got some of the intrinsic colours here um, by Hamster Sheen um, and we've got, so in the clear lacquers, a couple of different clear lacquers here, we've got the acrylic gloss and the satin by Chestnut, and also the plastic coat ones as well, that's, that's quite a nice one. Some things that I find don't last as long as others, so be, you'll find fairly quickly which aerosols, uh, aerosols you can um, keep for longer. Um, we've got a, a good gold, a good silver there, I've had that silver for about five years, because I only use small bits, but it's, it's still, it keeps going. Um, um, what's that so, place called in Germany? So there's two places. One is Obenhau, which is a bigger town. Obenhau is um, spelled um, O-L-B-E-R-N-H-A-U. And the other one is Seifen, which is S-E-I-F-F-E-N. You search both of those on the web, um, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And the company that I get these from is Steinitz, okay, uh, which is S-T-E-I-N-E-R-T. Um, great friends of, of Axminster Tools. We've worked with them for a long, long time. Um, and they're in that Erzberg region of Germany. So the all mountain region where the, um, the history of these German nutcrackers and smokers and, and everything Christmas um, was, was born, has come about. So, so there. So thank you, Charlie. That's, uh, oh, that's one quick look at the glue. Uh, again, you've seen me use it before, but it's the Zap. Um, a Z epoxy. Uh, this is a 30 minute one, but for most of this, this quick joining, I'm using the five minute because it's exactly that. It's a five minute um, uh, duration in dry time. Big bottles last you forever. It's a 50 50 mix. You get a resin and you get a, um, a resin and a epoxy. Yeah, a resin and a. What am I talking about, Cohen? The, the hardener, the resin and the hardener. There we are. Okay, thank you, Charlie. So, have, have any more questions before we disappear? Nope. Are we all good? Okay. Give it a couple of seconds. <laughs> well, look, I'm going to say thank you, guys. You've got, what is it today? We've got another one on Thursday. We're going to start another big project on Thursday, I think. We think we'll see. We'll see how the, we'll see how everything pans out because the next one is is a major one. So I might do something a little bit smaller Thursday so we can start a two part on Tuesday maybe. But I haven't decided yet if I was. Um, have fun with that. Enjoy it. Get making. Down, um, print off the plans or the line drawings anyway. You see me um, do it. it. Doesn't. I want to say it's easy. I'm going to say all of these products are easy if you don't concentrate on the finished project. You concentrate on one bit at a time. The bits in front of you is your priority. Don't worry about anything else. Have fun with it though, enjoy. Start getting at it all the bits that you need to get. Um, post as many pictures on our um, page as possible. And um, I'll see you again on Thursday. Uh, so we've got a couple of questions now. Uh, would the chestnut melamine lacquer be okay or should it really be the acrylic? So I've never used the melamine lacquer over the stain. Ch um, just test a little bit first. All right, just test a, do a scrap you know a, a dummy run just to make sure it doesn't lift this the stain but uh yeah give it a go i can't see why not um if you've got it might be worth using it absolutely uh can you get the 24 hour epoxy uh, can you get a 24 hour epoxy yeah um you can but i haven't seen them as glues i've only seen them as um um, like casting resins, that sort of stuff, or countertop resins. I haven't seen a 24-hour one as a glue. I'm not sure what West Systems is. Might be worth checking West Systems if you wanted a slightly slower set. 
Um, epoxy, but I'm not sure. Um, could you make the head and body from one piece of wood? Yeah, you could. If you're not going to put a mechanism in there, absolutely do that. Um, I do it because I find it easier to paint. Um, if you think about the body being separate, you're going to block colour the body. I want to keep the head as the natural timber and just put the facial features on and spray over the top. It just makes life a bit easier for me, that's all. Um, but no, if you prefer to do that, absolutely go go for it. Yeah, just know that you're going to have to cut in the body colour. That's it. That it? Okay, guys, once again, I will see you on Thursday. Have fun with your turning. Um, so until Thursday, 4 o'clock, my place. Uh, see you then. Have a turn. Bye-bye.